Um, we are super excited. I am very excited to um, introduce our facilitator for today's session, which is the do's and don'ts at an interview. And she is Miss Lilanthi Herat. So I have had the opportunity to listen to Ms. Herath on a couple of occasions, and I have thoroughly enjoyed the experience. So to give you an idea of who Ms. Lilanthi Herath is, she specializes in many industries, real estate, shipping, logistics, and many, many other. Um, and she's got a vast experience in diverse sectors. She has been successful in guiding students and professionals to develop their careers in many specialized areas. So here is a person with a lot of experience in the corporate sector. And having all of this experience, I'm sure Ms. Herat would have met and interviewed both young and experienced professionals. So with that, she is able to give us an idea of what to do and what not to do at interviews. And I'm sure that is something we all face in life, isn't it? When you leave school, when you leave university, when you apply for jobs and promotions and you know, your higher studies, you always face interviews in life. And who better to give us a bit of guidance than Ms. Herat. So Ms. Herat, I'm super excited for today's um, session one, because I've always enjoyed your sessions, ma'am. And two, I know that you are going to be talking from a wealth of experience. So with that, Ms. Herat, I'd like to hand over the controls to you, ma'am. And uh, I warmly welcome all of you, the undergraduates of Ruhuna, University of Ruhuna, um, for this session. And um, uh, I believe uh, this is actually a good, uh, and I hear that all of you are on the second year. And uh, I believe uh, this is actually a good start for you, uh, all of you, uh, because you will be in the job market very soon, no sooner you do your finals. So um, getting your self, uh, getting yourself um, um, trained on how proper interviews are conducted is actually a very important thing because in my career, I would have interviewed thousands of uh, thousands of candidates over the 35 years. Well, let's say about 25 years of my career, I have been interviewing people and uh, some of them are university students. And I see a lot of lacking um, in uh, the training, training of interviewing skills of for a candidate. It's very important that actually you represent your education, your your personality your background and you know the school and all that and especially since you have not been interviewed before probably you all have worked in places but then again i believe most of them most of you must be uh, still studying and and not employed so i'll be actually talking about uh, a lot of experiences i have had in conducting interviews and um, so let's start. Uh, interviews, as you know, can be a very stressful session, really, until you get through the interview. Starting from the time you look at the advertisements and then applying for a job, you're, you're getting stressed because you, know, uh, you are looking for the right job for the right salary. And then when you look at uh, from the employer's point of view, the company's point of view they are also looking at the right uh, right candidate and and they have to assess whether you are suitable or not during that very short time period now generally for a for a new entrant of a can for a for a position we will be looking at about a half an hour interview session at most some of them, uh, when they come in, you know, their body language and what they say and their personalities and their confidence level, those are shown immediately. So when, uh, as you, you all must have heard about this saying called, there is no second chance for the first impression. Your first impression matters more than anything else. As you walk into the room, 
uh, interviewers will actually have uh, uh, you know um, an idea about how confident you are and then when you sit at the table they will you know every every single moment from the moment you enter the interview room will be judged and they there will be people who will be monitoring your activities in sri lanka we have um, we don't have very many experts in interviews they are actually only a very few companies will have trained interviewers so um, uh, but it's always good because now with the new companies coming in and with you know the virtual interviews it'll be it'll um, be important for you to just uh, harness those skills and just make an impression market yourself properly so let's start from the do's and don'ts of uh, of interviews uh, these are actually my experience uh, i've i've related to my experience and then uh, you know as a as a candidate just like you just after school i have started work and then you know how i also developed my career and and these interviews are very important it's a very important skill for everyone okay right so now but you could you could hear what i said right all this time yes ma'am yes okay so this is the time uh, okay this is the time we'll be talking about my slide show right the first slide i'm actually uh, you know these are things that um i will touch upon um, and and i have about 15 uh, uh screen uh, uh, slides and i'll be taking you one after the other just to make sure that you all understand the flow and the process of an interview because you know although we think that uh, you know you, you just walk into an interview and talk about what you know it is not so that the interviews can actually be very stressful if you really don't know the art so let's just start with this First of all, I'm actually just touching upon right from the beginning, you will be submitting an, imp an impressive resume or a CV, you call it a CV or a resume. This resume has to actually market you without even seeing you. The company will check your resume. The, uh, the resume should have a proper format and an impressive proper language and um, the resume is the one that makes that makes you you know get selected even for an interview so your first task is actually to submit an impressive resume there are so many online formats that can be used for this structure but make sure when you when you do your resume it has to be properly worded the language the grammar all that has to be proper you can't write broken english and expect the uh, the employer or whoever is going through your interview to be impressed so when you write this uh, resume make sure that someone who has um, uh, who has the proper language skills to go through that and and um, and correct it if there are mistakes so, right that i will touch upon that in my next slide and then uh, the the most important part in an interview is actually going at the right time we are famous for getting late in most cases i have seen people who get late who are actually those who have got lost uh, on their way they have miss their buses and then they have gone to the wrong office you know so many things like that so you need to be early for the interview this is actually an age old um, scenario where everyone talks about being punctual but we as a nation uh, lack in that so i'll be talking about the timing aspect there and then how to prepare for the interview this is actually not just um, the the dress code you need to be prepared to answer the right way the right questions the questions will be asked and you need to give them the right answers very confidently so i'll be touching upon that and then how to get a strong start at the interview 
and then you uh, we all have our you know specific ways of uh, of of uh, behaving our body language says it all whether you are a confident person or not and whether you are nervous whether you are stressed at that point all that can be seen from your body language so i'll be touching upon how you need to be when when you are at the interview and then there are some very common questions that are asked by the employer or the person who is interviewing you very common questions about 10 questions those will be you know if you can answer those questions the right way i'm sure all of you will get through your interviews and then uh, getting dressed to impress getting dressed to impress is not just you know wearing jewelry it has to there are certain dress codes you will be um, required to adapt when you go to an interview it's not fancy but uh, let me um, touch upon that in another slide and actually i have touched upon another new trend which is actually which is the virtual interview most of the time right now at this juncture of time a lot of people um, a lot of employers do virtual interviews that is by zoom just like this or zoom my you know there are so many other ways of doing virtual interviews so how you can prepare yourself for a virtual interview is also just touched upon here right so let's just go to the first uh, slide on submit how to submit an impressive resume so when you are submitting an a resume your resume has to be structured in a manner where you know there should there should be a proper proper uh, structure for the interview uh, for the resume you know, there are various formats you can download from internet there are various formats you can download from our own microsoft word documents also there are quite a few resume formats you can download but make sure that you get a professional format not just uh, you know with smileys and stuff like that it has to be a formal presentation your resume says it all because they'll go through your resume before they see you so your that is that your resume is going to do the talking for you before you see them face to face and in all cases when you are submitting your resume please make sure that you have a small cover letter it doesn't have to have you know pages and pages just one small paragraph with your address it's a personal letter like you know you will have your address and you will address it to the person who's uh, the recruiter and then you will just uh, say your position uh, you are applying for if there are references make sure that the references are there these are very common things that everyone will know but they are you know you tend to miss some aspects even in a cover letter some miss the date some miss the signature some uh, don't have addresses some have their grammar gone wrong so make sure that um, uh, there is a small cover letter saying that you are uh, applying for this particular job and uh, you know hope to uh, get some positive response and then you you choose a professional font which is also important don't use these italics and you know these flowing language um, um, fonts make sure that they are formal arial times new roman or calibri those are the formal fonts you can always use for a resume and a formal photograph don't uh, you know don't have uh, photographs which act, uh, casual photographs which actually gives you um, you know an impression that you are not serious um, those will include um, you know these uh, i'm sure you know what you are what i'm talking about the the uh, you know you shouldn't be wear, wearing revealing the, uh, attire it has to be a proper shirt for a male and a proper blouse or a sari for a female those are the formal uh, photographs you will have to attach to a resume and then a simple description as your profile your profile has to be you know it's something like this i am a, i am a graduate of agriculture or whatever you know looking for a suitable position uh, uh, something like that very simple description of your profile 
and then mention your qualifications, your work experience, what you have achieved in school and your university, all extracurricular activities, because some recruiters actually look at how active you have been in your education, in your life also. And if you have worked anywhere, if you have not blundered there or made a mistake, just make sure that you have proper work experience mentioned there and 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 don't please make sure that you don't lie about your work experience because most of the people who interview you know better than you about most of these aspects of uh, work experience they will ask you questions if they ask you and if you are unable to explain what you have done as work experience and if you have actually not done it will be a definitely a deal breaker you might not even be called for a second interview and it I actually the most of the time when you realize as an in, as an interviewer when i see that people have lied about their experience you know we just stop the interviews we just uh, very casually very tactfully close the interview and tell them thank you very much we'll get back to you so that is that is a very important part where you just don't lie about your work experience and your qualifications because those can be sometimes people want proof. They might even call the previous work experience work uh, places to check whether you have actually done that. So achievements are another aspect where your extracurricular activities in school and in university make sure that you have you know you line line them up so that it's very interesting for the reader to read and then if they have asked for referees make sure that you put two referees and and make sure that you inform the referees that you have put their names as referees because there are instances when you call the referees most of the companies will call back the referee to check on on whether you whether the referee is aware of you uh, of your um, um you know whether you have applied for the job or not so make sure that referees are also known to you and and that you keep them informed about what uh, you have applied for and then always make sure if you are not just sending an email if it is a manual uh, resume make sure your signature is put in there and the date we see um, um some uh, some uh, resumes just come without a signature or a date even a, a canned signature is fine you need to have the signature in your resume right so that is actually how you how to impress the the interviewer before you see them your resume is what uh, it says uh, what says it all okay so let's now this is the uh, resume and then uh, we talk about timing you know don'ts and do's in timing i'm i'm very particular about this timing because you know we uh, we have been trained to be very punctual in our meeting for anything we go we make sure that we go before the time so that we are ready we are not tired we are not stressed or you know flustered about you know getting late make sure that you go in time the time punctuality is some is another trait we sri lankans don't have you know we must make sure that we respect other people's time also by being punctual and um, uh, you know at interviews most of the time we see a lot of candidates getting late that is probably you know some unavoidable factor but then again you have to make sure that you are going leaving home early making sure that you go to the place at the right time and also don't be too early also uh, the right time would be if you can just arrive 20 minutes early would be the perfect time for you to just go talk to the receptionist and you know give your resume and then you just sit and wait till you are called 20 minutes is a good time for you to sit and relax also and then when you sit and relax you don't just look at your phone and you know going through various dramas and you know facebook and and social media make sure that you read something about the company you can always do a web search and look at the company what the company is doing 
look around and see how the company is working you can actually get a glimpse of um, well, uh, a very good idea about how company uh, um, uh, operates when you are seated and you know watching around so be you uh, need to make sure that you go, you are not too early also because when you are too early the interviewer most probably they have other work also when they finish the work they'll have they'll start the interviews at the right time if well we in as i always say punctuality is something we uh, have to practice and and uh, and as a discipline so um, if you are about an hour early it will actually stress the interviewer also uh, you know they they we as interviewers wouldn't want to see a person seated for one hour even though it's not the interviewer's fault so make sure that you are ready and seated about 20 minutes before the time that's given to you but i have experienced also that these interviews uh, don't get started at the time they specify but anyway it's it's not your prerogative let them uh, do whatever but you make sure that you arrive at the interview at least 20 minutes early right and then let me go to how to pre this is actually a very important and an interesting topic how to prepare for the interview you know now when you are preparing for the interview you need to differentiate yourself you there are maybe 50 to 60 people who are lying queuing up for the interview for you to impress the interview panel or the person who's interviewing you you need to differentiate your um differentiate yourself so that they the pan interview panel will actually draw attention to you so the differentiation is not just uh, a, a very heavy qualification it can be so many other things like your attire how you um, how you talk to them uh, and and your first impression uh, the first few seconds of your of your work, walking into the interview makes a big difference. And then you need to be prepared on certain points where you can actually say, this is how, you know, this is me. You, when you walk in, you may not be able to say that, but when you talk about it, your past experience, your uh, may, may not have, uh, you may not have worked before, but your, experience your education background and your you know your certain um, project you have done um, relate those when you are talking to them and make sure that you are no. properly uh, you are ready to market yourself as the most important you know. and the most important candidate for them to recruit you when when an interview is conducted generally there are three aspects um, of the interview you know and and the questions uh, are also categorized in three aspects one is the technical knowledge they check your technical knowledge on the interview at the interview and then they see your analytical ab abilities because uh, you have to be very analytical when you are working in a private sector company or a gov i don't know about government sector but in a company your analytical skills will actually go a long way and then they will ask you about your behavioral aspect behavioral area where they check on 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 your behavioral aspect and then um, technical analytical and behavior so you have to be ready with your technical now if you have done a degree in it you will know what your technical expertise is make sure that you all you that you all are prepared to answer questions on those areas. Analytical is actually just, you know, giving them uh, an idea about the percentages, you know, whatever you know, you might be able, when you talk, you might be able to say around 10% is uh, going through this, then, you know, things like that, your analytical skills, some actually take you to um, um, IQ tests, 
online IQ tests and they might give you a hard copy, you know, they have their own uh, on um, own um, psychometric tests and, you know, IQ tests. Those are very important. Make sure that you all are ready for that. And then your behavioral aspect is how you, um, um, you know, how you studied. They might ask you about your personal life. Make sure that you don't talk about your personal life unless they ask you for it. Because it's not, I mean, um, an interviewer will not be asking you for your marital status, your age. Those are things that we shouldn't ask at an interview. Well, in some countries, those are considered offenses, very offensive to ask for the age and uh, to ask for uh, your marital status, whether you have children, your family background. Those are things that people uh, um, try to avoid at proper interviews. And then, um, you know, past experience, as I earlier told you in my previous slide, when you write in your resume what you have done, make sure that they are done and then they that, that you have done those and you are very familiar with them. Because in your interview panel, there can be people who are very familiar with some of the words that you have used. So they might actually pick on that and question you. So if you if, if you are unable to answer clearly and explain what is written there, they will think that you are not actually being honest there. So make sure that you are fully aware of the detailed content you have written in your CV. I'm, I'm stressing this point because we have gone through so many resumes where they actually don't give a correct picture of their uh, about their work experience also before you go to the interview make sure that you read the job description clearly and understand what the job requires they, in the advertisement they will always say what is required and what this is the job uh, that is um, uh, being advertised so you make sure that your job description is checked and you relate whatever you have uh, as experience or qualifications, make sure that you relate and you know, just understand your, uh, your ability to blend in with that job. Just uh, um, for an example, if, if for an account position, if they have asked for bank reconciliations and let's say trial balancers and stuff like that. And if you have experience in that, just, uh, Think about what you have done in your bank reconciliations, how often you do that, you know, things like that. And, and there can be questions as to, okay, where do you charge your bank charges? Where do you charge your LC charges? Things like that. If they ask you, you should be fully aware of the, the technical aspect of your job description because you are an accountant or an assistant accountant or a finance degree holder. You should be able to explain those and also it's very important to learn about the company on their website their social media pages make sure that you understand what the company is doing their products and services get information talk to your friends if they know about the company make sure that you are fully aware of the company because we will um, as as an interviewer we will always expect the person who's um, being interviewed to be aware of what the company is doing. You can't just walk in and say, if we ask, what, do you know what this company is doing? Uh, you can't say, no, I don't No, you, uh, We expect you to be prepared for the interview. And, and that gives you a lot of confidence also to answer a question like that. Yes, I know what this company is doing. These are the products and services, and this is the law. The, the, um, uh, the company has been in operation since, uh, you know, this date and, and uh, these are your social uh, um, corporate uh, social responsibilities and you know things like that you need to understand what the companies there are enough and more they, they um, to, this is an a, a era where we are we, we are exposed to enough information about any company so make sure that you understand the company don't ever go without understanding what the company is doing and also what your job requirements are and also the, the the other thing is actually you need to practice very positive answers don't 
be negative when you're answering questions don't go to um, show that you are a victim and you know you don't uh, have any control over life those are not things that you need to discuss be very positive you know even a negative answer can be confirmed can be communicated as a positive answer you know if you if you practice and learn it learn the the art right and then this is also a very important part you have to practice your handshake i have seen a lot of people who just can't shake hands properly some are very soft you know some sh sh shaking uh, um, of a hand represents a lot of things it actually gives what your personality is it gives information about your personality how you firm you are whether you are actually a, whether you are a strong personality or not your a firm shake hand is not just um uh are nikang listen now wage nikang you know are mild nikang soft shake hand ekak wenna ba it has to be a very strong shake hand but it can't be also you know a very painful squeezing of the hand to show your strength that is not a shake hand either so you have to be make sure you practice your shake, handshake with somebody else who knows how to shake hands that is important and also when you are preparing for the interview you you know there are certain questions that they, that they'll be asking you uh, why did you leave the company what had really happened and you know stuff like that so don't go to condemn your previous employer your company your bosses or your teachers it's a it's a definite no if if you start condemning your employer or the company or the school it will actually show that you are not very grateful and it's not going to go down well with the interviewer so make sure that your answers are tone down and um, you know a typical example is you can ask why did you why did you leave the previous company i mean the you know the reason for you to leave would have been the worst boss in the company uh, you know you have ever come across but then again don't say that you will have to find an answer which says well um, you know you can talk about your career advances and stuff like that but don't make, but make sure that you do not condemn uh, and make any condemning statements or insulting statements about your previous job right now this topic is also something we we it these are very common things that we do and we shouldn't be doing so how to get a strong start at the interview to get a strong start in the interview before you go into the interview please make sure that you switch off your mobile phones you know you can't put it on vibration because if you can hear the vibration the interviewer can hear the vibration also so do you know when you have a mobile phone on during an interview it distracts you and it distracts the interviewer and it actually shows that you are not respecting that little time that 30 minutes or 15 minutes that you are having with them you are not respectful it's very disrespectful when you have a mobile phone you know ringing during that short time so make sure that you switch off your phone and um, and you have to project yourself to me to to for them to understand that you are different from others that is actually it can be your attire your smile your shake hand uh, how you how you uh, shake your hand and and uh, you know when you are interview being in, when you are being interviewed you need to also look at the person's eyes directly but don't make you know it's not like this um, interrogations or investigations where the police look at your eyes to see whether you are a rogue it's that is not the the confident look in the eye i am talking about you when you, you have to have eye contact let you, and and make sure that you maintain that eye contact for a while and then you know just move your eyes here and there but also um, make sure that you have a con confident eye contact that is also a very important aspect when you are when you are creating an impression towards people whom you are being interviewed and then 
as I earlier told you, make sure that you uh, practice your handshake. You can dress proper. Your pro attire will also say a lot of things. And I have actually just uh, had a, uh, I have included a, the, a slide which shows what uh, a professional um, outlook would be like when you are going for an interview. So, um, and that is uh, one of one and then prepare to give accurate answers to all the questions you when they raise questions you have to make sure that you give the right answer it's very important to understand what your resume says although it, maybe uh, you might you may have done the resume but if if some in the rush somebody had added you know certain other aspects you need to understand what it so that you can give very confident answer and uh, and then uh, your job history now since most of you are just uh, you know getting out of university only a very few will have past uh, work experience but that past work work experience matter if you have done internships you mentioned those and and if you have been employed and if you have been you know if you have left the organization give them right answers about why you left it is very important to give uh, the right answers for leaving jobs you can't say those people were jealous they never spoke to me i was so lonely i didn't want to uh, i was crying those are things that you need to avoid when you are talking about your previous employment why you left the previous employment okay also now this is a very important uh, don't not to something not you shouldn't be doing don't give memorized answers when we talk about certain areas i have seen 90 percent of the people just go on talking about the same thing i'm i am 22 years old i am i my mother is a housewife my father is so and so my i have two brothers those are not what they are asking you for it is actually about your about your how you will blend in with the new organization so you need to actually phrase it in such a manner where they where they understand that you are um actually relating your experience and your uh, your personality to suit the new organization that you are being interviewed or recruited so um, most of the time when we uh, when we see people who have memorized their answers you know it can actually be a, a real detriment fact so you uh, interviewers tend to just you know twist the question and then you wouldn't know what to say because you have memorized the answer so don't give memorized answers it's very important that you do not do that okay so let's go to the other slide where i talk about the body language at interviews when you go to the interview, when you walk into the room, please don't sit until they tell you to sit. They will always, as you walk in, they'll say good morning or good afternoon. The interview will ask you to sit. Until then, please don't sit because uh, you know that is uh, that is how it has to be. Now, although we just walk in and just sit wherever we want at an interview, you need to impress the person, and and until you are asked to sit, you don't sit. That's a very important thing. And you sit up straight. And, and when you sit up straight, you look very genuinely interested in, in, in a proper discussion. And, um, uh, and then you keep a good eye contact with the person who's, being in, who's interviewing you. The eye contact is also a very important aspect in your behavior and, and uh, how you can impress the, yeah, the company you are being interviewed and don't slouch slouching is like ara kudu vela nikam piti passata vela navila inna e e vidiyata inna epa your your back has to be straight don't slouch it gives a very bad negative uh, impression about your confidence level and about you know how interested you are about the job 
and the other aspect is don't lean forward towards the interviewer now don't keep your hands on the table and uh, you know show that you are very familiar you know like you you leaning forward and keeping your hands on the table of the interviewer is very bad is very bad um, uh, it gives a very bad impression sorry this uh, please give me a second yeah um, and um, you know the other aspect is don't point your fingers it's very bad when you talk if you point fingers it actually is a very offensive gesture so don't point fingers at uh, the interviewer you, i mean you need to be very professional when you are you using your hands it has to be proper uh, it has to be used properly and don't point fingers at you don't cross your arms you know it's a very it, it actually gives you, uh, gives a very defensive look if you uh, uh, it shows that there is like a barrier in front of you you don't want very many questions you are being defensive nikan mage me prashna hanne pa wage like questions wage you know if you cross your arms so please make sure that you don't cross your arms when you are seated and don't look at one person's eyes for too long that is also a little offensive and then you know you uh, tend to now if you have uh, ha you know you have hankies your hand bag your uh, tie your tie don't fiddle with them just make sure that your hands are kept at the right place and and you know and and you ha you have that um confidence you show that you have confidence by not doing those and then don't keep looking around the room that is also very uh, sort of it, it distracts the person who is interviewing you uh, don't keep looking around the room to see what the pictures are you know how the table is laid then you know the cupboards and all that it's not um, it's not on when you are at an interview so these are very important body language signs which you should and should not do i hope there are questions on this um, with the uh, anyway let's see how uh, it goes right and then these are the, the this is a very important area where you need to be very competent in your answers these are the most common questions that any interviewer will ask make sure that you have the right answers to these questions i can actually give you some answers to all these questions but um, uh, let's see how, uh, if we have time i will just uh, go through one by one and give you some answers that you will uh, be able to actually represent um, yourself in a um, more marketable manner susan uh, do you think i can just go through this um yes ma'am i'll just explain this and just uh, give an example right Because yes ma'am this ma has this has uh, quite a lot really about 10 questions there yeah. okay so when when uh, that interviewer asks you to tell about yourself please make sure that you relate your work experience and your qualifications and what you know to the job the, the the for this you need to know what your job description is as i told you when the advertisement is made you will definitely know what the job requires you to do so when you know this this will be like okay tell, when they ask you to tell them about yourself you can say okay i am i am an agriculture graduate and i have just passed my um, degree uh, and i have uh, done two internships uh, related to this job you can you know talk about organic farming and then you know about fertilizer and then the soil richness all that you know i have i have competencies in those and um, it, it should be a very brief answer and all these interviewers don't expect you to go on and on about one answer they expect you to give short proper answers 
so when you talk about yourself make sure that your qualifications your experience and, and whatever is related to the job are detailed don't go into your personal areas because well uh, in other countries it is it is not even asked your age is something you they never ask you so make sure that you are um, ready with an answer like that and when they ask you why you know the, these are common questions i will uh, i they they ask you for when they ask you why they should hire you you know you should be able to say you know certain experiences you have uh, certain job descriptions you have mentioned in your advertisement i have those experiences here with me this is what i have done in my company and uh, you know i'll i'll be able to um, do uh, um, i'll be able to transfer my knowledge to this company and i'll be able to um, um, Uh, do it with minimum uh, supervision you know kind of things which actually makes the interviewer feel comfortable to hire you and then if they ask you whether you are a team player i don't think anyone will say no i am not a team player but you can say yes i am a team player i have been you know involved in so many projects in my previous companies my university my previous um, school these projects uh, were um with large team members and i with large number of team members and i have been able to do all that as a team player and um and i i i am quite um, i can always practice empathy and i'm i am a very good listener uh, you know kind of thing you have to say when when you are saying um yes i am a team player you should be able to just substantiate it with just one or two examples so this the other question that i am going to throw throw at you is a very tricky question tell us your greatest weakness this weakness question um uh, you don't actually have to say uh, i am uh, you know i am unable to lie those are not weaknesses those are strengths so don't talk about uh, don't convert a strength to a weakness most of the time you need to be very general about your weaknesses you can uh, you you know you can actually say um, i obviously have uh, gaps in my work experience when it comes to working i i'm you know um, i have been exposed to this kind of a in industry before and now your your industry is something different there will be gaps which i am willing to learn so you can talk about a weakness like that and you can also so say you know i have um, there was a time when i was uh, unable to handle my um, deadlines and um, i have uh, perfected that by using uh, a diary um, microsoft diaries or whatever and you know i have actually perfected it and now i am in a proper um, um, uh, proper mental state to um, handle those weaknesses you can also say i am not very good at public speaking but uh, you know i i had an experience last time in my previous company i was not um, i didn't handle my um, uh, presentation well because i got nervous with uh, pub, talking to a large crowd or something like that don't talk about other weaknesses i mean people don't expect you to um uh, be a perfect person but we all have weaknesses and we have to be very general at an interview i mean it's not a personal um uh, interrogation right and then here when you are when they ask where do you see yourself in 5 years you can't say okay i will in 5 years time i'll be seated on your seat don't don't say things like that it is offensive you can say okay i am certainly going to be Uh, um, improving myself i will learn all the work and i will actually be a proper team player supporting the entire team and your company mission and vision i will be um, hope i'm i'm hoping that i'll be progressive i will have a proper a pro career progression and i'll perform well and i will definitely be in a better position than than now to perform 
in your organization because most of the time when they ask where do you see yourself in five years they just want to see how stable you are in that organization because most of the companies spend a lot on training when they spend uh, on training they expect a certain stability and a certain number of years uh, you will uh, you know you will be stable in that company so that will be uh, and a very general answer make sure that you all don't give very negative answers when when the interviewers ask you these questions invariably out of these 10 questions you will be asked at least at least five or six questions from this right and then um, uh, there will be the other question i have put is why do you want to leave your current job well you can actually say i am looking for um, for a fresh start i've uh, um, uh, i get bored when i don't have new things to learn and i i'm sure this job will teach me that and uh, i i'm sure i will have progressive uh, learning uh, abilities in this organization, you know, kind of th things like that. Or you can uh, always talk about your location, your distance to tra work, to tra travel time to work, you know, stuff like that. Be general about um, the, the reason when you talk about the reason to leave your current job. And the, the other question is if I asked your friends or colleagues to describe you, what would they say this is also uh, i mean this is something they will want to see uh, they will want to see what your friends and colleagues talk about you so what and and how you want to be perceived so when friends uh, you know friends and colleagues you can actually talk about how hard working how committed you are how sincere you are and uh, you know if you can say my friends will say i am a hard working genuine and a committed friend um, and, a, and a sincere friend and the colleagues can say I, I I'm a very empathetic I I have a lot of empathy I practice empathy I am hard working I I would always help another colleague you know things like that make sure that your answers are very positive even as a joke don't give negative answers and then the other question is tell me about the worst job the worst boss you have ever had this is a this is a very common question people ask just to see whether your personality um, uh, gives way to another bad uh, habit of condemning so you can say i haven't had any worst bosses all of them have taught me a lesson one way or the other and uh, I have taken that as an experience and I'm moving forward. I don't think any of my bosses were that bad to talk about. You know, don't, how the, you would have had the worst boss who had, you know, made you suffer to the end. But then again, don't talk about those. Maybe when you join the company, when you talk to your colleagues, that's a different story. But until then, don't talk about how bad your bosses are, even if they ask you a question like that. And then this level of salary you are expecting. Most of you who have just passed out as a degree holder may not have that kind of a you know ability to demand about the sal demand uh, your salary. But your salary expectation you can always you know if you say a give a very high figure you know that's a, that's going to be a deal breaker. You are not going to get recruited because the company can't afford. Every company has its own budgets for salaries, so you must make sure that you are that you are giving a tactful answer. You can always say, um, I, "I need to get more information about the the work related um, uh, stuff before I give you a salary um, ex before I give you my salary expectation." But if you can give me an offer and what the company can afford. I will definitely very seriously consider it. Don't, um, most of the time, um, if you demand a very high salary, you might not get, and if you actually um, ask for a lower salary also, it might not go down well with you because, you know, when you are employed and if you actually understand that your all your colleagues are getting higher salaries, you will regret giving that answer. So make sure that you have, um, 
uh, make sure that you give them a non uh, committive non committed answer it's it should be um, a, a decent answer like that and then you know there will be another question right at the end of the um, uh, interview they will ask you okay i have now we have uh, uh, we have uh, asked all the questions do you have any answer uh, questions for me so when you are asked about those questions you know there are very important things uh, that you can ask about um, uh, the company and and what what the questions you can ask would be you can ask um, um, uh, you can actually ask uh, if if the interviewers are basically decent and if, if you have not had any unpleasant reactions from them you can ask them um, can you tell me about your journey in this company the interviewer can actually give you a very good understanding of of how the company is and how progressive he had been you can always ask the interviewer what uh, what was your journey in this company be have you um, you know that that will be a very good uh, uh, discussion point for you and then you can also ask um, uh, 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 you can also ask what kind of skills and experience do you require for for the the candidate to perform in this job you can actually ask that so that they can give you more than what is mentioned in the job description and they can also ask what do you know about the company as i told you when you are preparing for the for the interview you need to make sure that you understand what the company is doing the name of it's not just the name of the company you can you you need to understand their products and services what they have on offer their visions their mission how much you know they they are so corporate social responsibilities those things are very important for you to know before you go for an interview okay let's go to the other slide now these these are you know when in my previous slide i i, I mentioned that they can ask you whether you have any question so these are the questions you can ask because most of the time uh, when you are given that chance don't miss it you don't have to say no i don't have any questions you know i am all good you answered all the quest all the questions i had in mind those are um, it sounds very lame you don't uh, i mean you being a professional you being educated you should have more questions than what they say so these are the questions that you can always ask you can ask about the qualities and the qualifications of the person the employer is looking for the job that was advertised and you can also ask what type of experience does the company require to perform this job right and then you can ask who your boss will be whom you are reporting to and then you can all this is another very important question you can ask when will this position be finalized and uh, when will you be selecting the candidate and when can i hear from you when do you know when will we know the results final results of the interview the final outcome you know questions like that you can ask and you can all there is another important aspect the performance to be evaluated this is actually something you will have to ask if you are aware of how the performance evaluations are done and and um, if you have previous experience on getting increments and stuff like that make sure if you are if you want to ask this question please do some search some research on how the performances are evaluated in company and you can also this is a very tricky question you can handle if you can handle only you can ask whether there is a lot of traveling involved because if, if the company has a lot of traveling involved you know as as candidates you might be a, a you know a female who is unable to travel there can be mothers who can't travel you know so uh, that might be a deal breaker if you ask the question and if they interpret it in a negative manner right and 
you can also as i explained earlier you can ask why um, you know to explain how uh, the interviewer um, uh, performed in that company and 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 a, and a story about his his uh, employment uh, journey in the company right and and then the next question is actually an all important slide really things that you shouldn't ask the employer these are very important definite don'ts those are things about holidays and leave entitlement i have experienced in most of my companies most of the inter young interview people who get uh, interviewed young candidates the first thing they'll ask is holidays and leave entitlement do you have to work on saturdays those are those are definite deal breakers so please don't ask about holidays and leave entitlement at the at the interview and when uh, and you can all you should also not ask about the increments when the increments are due how can i get my next salary increment those are um, those are things that you should never ask at the interview uh, maybe uh, you know most of the time in your letter of appointment if you are selected they will list down whatever that is there whatever that is being on offer for an employee but don't ask at the interview and then uh, don't ask about the fringe benefits of the company the, uh, the the chances are that the interviewer will tell you what the fringe benefits that will be offered to you and also don't ask about why the position is vacant this is a very offensive question if if that person um, who's going to supervise you is around they this is going to be an offensive answer so please don't ask, uh, ask about why the position is vacant because it can actually lead to a very unpleasant situation it could have been a very unpleasant situation for the company also so they wouldn't want to relate it maybe when you get into the company if you are lucky enough to get into the company you may get to know it later with the grapevine the company can always you know we have a lot of people who gossip so you can informally ask but at the interview this is definitely a no go answer right and then i have actually touched upon this virtual interviews because we have seen a lot of issues when we do virtual interviews with the candidates these are things that everyone knows but you know we we just don't practice these are very simple things but you need to really understand that it's very important to practice this right so now my first thing here is on virtual interviews make sure that the software is downloaded tested and online in a place where there is best wifi connection this is very important you need to have, you can't when you know when you are given an interview at 6:30 you can't log in at 6:15 and download the software and test it it's very important that you do it way before the interview make sure that you are ready and tested your voice is tested your sounds and all that and wifi connection all that and then log on at least 10 minutes before the interview and check the speakers microphone cameras sound settings and everything whether they everything is in order right and then make sure that you are well received at the other end you must always check from the other party whether whether they can hear you because you might be you know accidentally you might have muted your mic and and you know the disasters can happen if you are not prepared and always have lights in front of you not behind because your lights in front will um give light um, will make sure that your face is clear when you have one from behind the person who's receiving it may have problem trouble um, looking at your face or you know looking at at least seeing your face and then make sure that there are no distractions and disturbances in the place where your interview is being conducted because when you are having too much distraction the per, the in person who's interviewing you may get sick of it long before the interview is completed so make sure that the distractions are also minimized and dress professionally like you would wear for a face to face interview your tie your shirt um, properly buttoned your sari or your blouse or whatever they are properly dressed ironed 
because you can see all that when you are online when you have a zoom or a, um, uh, any meeting a virtual meeting you can they can always see how prepared you are how serious you are about your interview and also body language as i mentioned and and this um, virtual uh, interviews can actually see your facial expression much more than just face to face because you are just looking at your face and uh, practice and record yourself if you can just um, you know rehearse just record talk or talk on to the screen and and make sure that you are ready and prepared for the interview so these are little points i have actually uh, uh, summarized for a virtual interview these are very common these are things everybody knows but you know these are things that people hardly practice when it comes to uh, interviews because it's become it becomes a disaster at the at the time of the interview if you are not prepared with all this right okay so um, and these are two brief slides i have prepared how to dress to impress there is no second chance for the first impression i i know this for sure so many play in so many places when you come for interviews you yeah most of the time you are without a tie you go come by bus or public transport you are, remove your tie you come to the interview and you put your tie on you are not folding your collar properly your tie can be seen from here and there and your tie not is in place your tie not is not in place it's not done properly you know you should be very careful when you are uh, uh, coming for an interview with your attire most of the time a girl can always wear a blouse and a smart uh, skirt and if you want if you have you can always wear a coat and make sure that your hair is properly combed your eye um, um, your makeup if you have if you use makeup make sure that they are decent not very elaborate you know dark punching colors and stuff like that your earrings should be decent they have to be minimum accessories don't use all the costume jewelry and the jewelry you have for an interview make sure that they are simple and nice and formal pants or suits is what a girl would wear and moderate um, high heels fine make sure that you have a formal atmosphere a formal appearance with uh, covered shoes will be best because you know these are these are international now i i know a case where for a university when the children were when the students were interviewed to be taken in for the interview process at the uh, by the university they have actually specified what to wear for the interview no dark colors you have to be smartly attired no uh, elaborate accessories no nail colors you know stuff like that you, so you have to be aware of what the world um, wants and make sure that you are adjusting it to suit the local environment and for a male you will always have a long sleeve shirt and a tie make sure that the tie is either a uh, Uh, either a single color or a very decent design don't have smiley faces or you know sponge what square pants and people you know the the things that you have uh, these funny ties don't wear them make sure that you are taking your interview seriously your shoes should be a neutral color don't um, your your shoes um your trouser it will be best if you wear a dark color trouser a white shirt always wear decently don't wear very dark uh, you know bright colors uh, uh, your for your shirts a white would always stand uh, out so um, um, the employer uh, when you when you dress up saree is uh, well uh, you will never go wrong with a saree you wear the sari just uh, be very simple about it if you are wearing a sari but you know attire is very important to impress the first impression there is no second chance for a first impression right and then uh uh 
um, you know, when you're properly attired, it gives a proper message that you are keen in getting the job. And it makes you feel very confident and comfortable. And, and um, you know, you feel very professional when you, when you, uh, when your attire is proper. And this is a very important point. Please have a good night's sleep. If and no alcohol the previous day, all these rooms where you have cubicles, if you wear alcohol, if you if you have had alcohol the previous night, there's nothing that can, there's nothing that can um, um, avoid the, the, the smell and you know when you breathe you may not understand but when you breathe you breathe you smell alcohol so make sure that the previous night this may be like a joke but it is so true when when you are in an enclosed environment and if you have had liquor the previous day it's actually really very bad so i think you will uh, take the point i don't have to go on elaborating and have a good night's sleep because your eyes can actually show, show that you are tired when you are when you are not when you haven't had proper rest the next day your your even your mind can be muddled right so i have just shown some pictures here you know how how when you are waiting for the interview how you keep your legs this is also very important you know some people just slouch and stretch their legs so that you know nobody can pass that area without tripping so make sure that you have you know your feet are kept together in a professional manner uh, susan i think my for my presentation is over I stopped with uh, the uh, the attire dress to impress, and uh, this is the final slide I have. So you Thank can fire you, any questions if you have any. Thank you so much, ma'am. So let me open out yes. to the participants, and if you have questions, you can put it on the chat, or you could um, you unmute yourself. And ask the question as well. Mona Hari questions, the Anna Chat take it on, and at Nang unmute Kerala Ahana Puluangi. No questions, so everyone is very confident, huh? Of getting through their interviews. Miss Herat, I yeah. have a question if you don't yes. mind, ma'am. Of course. So I have, I have heard. Um, many people, not just at job interviews, mm. but in general, mm. people do ask this question. Tell me about your strengths. Yes. How do you answer this in a way, Ms. Hera, that you don't come off as a very forceful person? Because we don't want that also. If you don't mind, ma'am, let me try to put that into single as well for the benefit of those Mm. who might need it. So, Samane Ms. Herat Goda Katya Mang Ahalatiyana Ahanoa Me Oage Strengths Kana Chutta Kya Na Kya. Shakti, no. Positive. Thank you, ma'am. I think it's not so great. I understood that. So, Eka Aansa Karadi Ms. Herat Samaru Vela Avata Api Thoran Vakshna Var Thekka Api Chara Hari Munaadha Kya Ne Forceful Nantang Goda Forward Vidyata Um Misunderstand Karana Puluang Me Ms. Hera. They go A Kata Komada Api Uttaraya Denne. Oh, then when you are when you are asked about your strengths, you know, don't bring this honesty, loyalty. Those are actually not strengths. Those are things you need to have in your system for you to perform well. You have to be honest. It is it is a no-go. I mean, you there is no question you, about you not being honest, no. So those are things that you should never bring out. But you can always talk about how good a team member you are, how, em, how, you, how you can practice empathy, how you can listen to other people, how you can help other people. Your strengths, it's always related to your team, right? You're working in a company where your team is more important and how you can work late, you can help other people. Your vast experience will definitely help you to uh, help, uh, help other people um, in your team. 
and uh, you know in times of trouble you can travel if you need to those are strengths those are the the general strengths you can talk about but please don't talk about you being honest you you are not you don't lie about things those are those are given you have to be like that for you to do well in an organization so being a team member your strength you can actually talk about um how, well you know so many other um, uh, strengths like um, you are able to um, organize your organization skills are good you are very good with your computer you are excellent with your excel your word documents you have good uh, language command those are things that you can always bring up which relates to the organization i mean having a fat bank account doesn't mean anything in an organization although it is the biggest strength you have thank but you. <laughs> thank you so much ma'am miss herat i have another question since the yeah. participants are quiet mm -hmm. um this is again miss herat like you said you know a very common question that is asked is also tell me about yourself mm -hmm. and a lot of candidates i'm sure you've had this experience as well they'd mm. start out by saying my name is susan i come from yeah. jala so what is your opinion about that this is, ms hera that is actually uh, that is complete um, um it's a disaster i if in my own language i wouldn't expect you to come out with your personal details tell me about when they ask you about yourself it is actually asking how you can blend in with the new organization the workload that you are get, uh, given they, they want to know how you can relate your experience and your uh, qualifications and your education to the current workplace so you can start with saying yes i am lilanti herat i am an accountant by profession i have a, a, a fellow membership of the cima and i am able to handle most of the the, the uh, points you have mentioned in the do job description i can do a, i can do a set of final accounts without any supervision i can see i can do reconciliations uh, of the balance sheet you know this is actually accounting jargon i am sure those who are in the finance field will understand and you can say i i i am very particular about doing bank reconciliations before i take the trial balance so these are you know those are your accounting strengths that is what they want to know it's not about your father being uh, a businessman and your mother being a housewife you having two sisters and studied at visaka those are not important that is not what you are asking they are asking you for when you are when you are asked to give an introduction or a or to explain yourself tokata api hitam api මොකක් හරි දෙයක් අපි දන්නේ නැහැ. If you don't know the answer, ඒතර අපිට දන්නේ නැහැ කියලා කියන්න පුළුවන්ද නැත්තම් අපි දන්නේ නැහැ කියලා ඒකට දන්නේ නැහැ. මෙහෙමයි. දැන් question සමහර questions තියෙනවා. බොරු කියන්න බැරි questions තියෙනවනේ. ඔයාලට නිකන් නිකන් අර ඈතට ගැහුවත් අහු වෙන විදිහේ බොරුවක් කියන්න පුළුවන් නම් that's a different story අහු වෙන්නේ නැතුව. හැබැයි වෙන මේ එහෙම කියනවා නම් ंग जॉब दैटिंग 
that is the maximum they can give up to and that is the also if if they have really been impressed by the candidate and if you ask for 300000 you might not get the job and if you ask for about 150000 you might regret in the end when you go back to the comp when you join the company and if all your colleagues are getting in the range of 250000 you will regret the 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 amount that you have asked for so you can always say i need for me to give an answer i need to have much more information and details about the job which is actually very difficult right now and i wouldn't want to commit myself like that but if you give me an offer i will wait for your offer letter and i will consider very positively and seriously what you have offered me for very high levels Uh, now I, we are not addressing the lower levels we are not, no, we are not addressing the ceo and director levels no here ceos and directors for your information they will always demand the salary and and the company will have to pay you if they want your talent to be recruited to be uh, in the um, company they will uh, always ask for salary and before they ask most of the time when you are headhunted you are given a salary this is what is being offered this if you want we can uh, go ahead but um, for lower levels it is not the case depending on your personality your aptitude and how you are handling things do you know your salary can vary slightly 20 to 25000 things like that can happen but for junior level uh, the company will have their own budgets no just ask them uh, to offer you Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, another question: How do you answer when you are asked about your weaknesses? Yes. So you know, when you are talking about weaknesses, um, very specifically, I need to tell you there are strengths that you actually try to twist and say it's a weakness. You know, like I can't lie, and you know, it's it's like a weakness, and I can't. um uh, you know i can't handle people who who are dishonest those are not weaknesses actually you can be very general about certain aspects of a business of a company you can say i am not very familiar with public speaking as that is but i actually that is an example i brought in you can say i am not very comfortable with uh, i have not been comfortable with public speaking because last time uh, when i did a pub presentation i was struggling but now i am actually um, improving my skills on public speaking and if i am given a presentation i am sure i will do well you know something like that that is public speaking and uh, you know we in in an organization you need that skill um, which is actually something you can be trained on so you know it's it's not it's not a bad uh, thing to say that you are not Uh, familiar with public speaking and you can always say there are gaps between my knowledge and the job that the, and the job that you um, uh, have mentioned in the job description but i am willing to understand and learn the uh, and learn and fill up the gaps that i have been lacking on in you know things like that obviously any organization even the best of the best will have knowledge gaps in uh, their employment when they start a new job so you can say there are obvious knowledge gaps in my in, in the uh, job description that you have given but i am willing to um, learn and uh, within the first 30 days i'll learn all that and be an expert eventually or then you can also have another thing saying that you know time management uh, i have uh, uh you know there was a time when i wasn't very uh, good with my time management i used to miss deadlines or i used to finish the work you know very close to the um uh, deadlines and uh, it was uncomfortable for my boss but now i with all the the microsoft uh, diaries and outlook diary i have now you know streamlined my workload so that i can um uh, uh, perform and uh, perform well you can also you know there are so many other areas where you can say um i have uh, uh, 
I have um, not been, uh, uh, there had been instances where, you know, I had clashes with team members, but then now I have learned to practice empathy and I'm now a very good team member. You know, things like that. Um, always say that you can improve your weakness. I would like to thank Mrs. Hera. Thank you so much, ma'am. It is always a pleasure listening to you <laughs> and just soaking up the wealth of knowledge that you have. And I'm sure that this will benefit these young people, especially as they um, you know, finish their studying and they go into the job market, ma'am. So thank yes. you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much, Ms. Hera. Just, I just want to tell everybody, you know, every interview you go to, you don't have to pass. There is always a second chance. You can always apply for, for other jobs. Don't get upset just because you haven't, you know, you, you didn't get your first uh, job at the first interview. You need to practice your, you know, you need to really practice your interview skills. It is like a life, it's a, it's a skill that you need to improve. And, and also, when you are going for an interview, don't think that this, this, you know, this interview is going is a is a is my lifesaver or I might you know not do well. Just treat it as another meeting. You know, we sometimes we actually just create certain norms in ourselves, uh, which actually drags us down. So just consider it a meeting or you know another step towards uh, your second uh, or your preferred job. We mustn't uh, never be um, uh, sort of, uh, we shouldn't be uh, discouraged if we don't get the job that you, that you have, if you uh, don't get the job if you, after the interview. Once again, Mrs. Hera, thank you so much for your time, ma'am. And it was a pleasure being able to listen to you again. And we do look forward to having you with us at another webinar, ma'am, or another training like this. You are most welcome. And I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Sanjeeva. Thank you, Susan.